Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us today for this AMA on the resource economy. So if it's your first time with us, I'm Stephanie, the Community Manager of Colonize Mars. And without further ado, I will uh, invite Hunter, our founder, and Sam to join us. Hello. Hey everyone. Okay, so you all already know Hunter, of course, but I think it's the first time you see Sam. So Sam, maybe you could tell them who you are. Uh, yeah, my name is Sam Hill. I support uh, Tom Gower with the uh, systems design and gameplay design side of Colonize Mars. Um, I've been on the team since December. Um, me and Tom basically bounce ideas off one another, uh, hopefully making sure that the ideas that come through are the best ideas. Um, yeah, basically we work work well as a team to make sure that we're we're putting the correct things into Colonize Mars and making sure the the bad ideas are filtered out before the community hear about them. Oh, so you know all the details and all the secrets. <laughs> they're, they're the genius minds behind the resources and all the cool stuff that's coming with the strategy game. Okay, great. So a very good place to start because we have a lot of questions. So let's start directly with the first one. So that's a, quite a simple one uh, to start. So can we earn resources on staking only or can Casino produce resources? So the the system allows staking rewards to produce resources. The gameplay will mainly revolve around cards producing resources once the resource gameplay goes live. So the intention is that players should be using their cards to produce resources, going through the resource chain, um, getting different, more complicated resources down the chain the further they go. But it, the, the staking rewards will be a smaller portion compared to what everyone's producing via their cards. Okay, so that will be more interesting to use the cards and go through the full chain, which is... Exactly. And obviously, if you want to passively stake some Marsha, get some some resource tokens to fill a particular hole in your individual resource chain, that's more what these pools can be used for. So if you're desperately in need of, uh, I don't know, uh, let, let's say you're desperately in need of some power, it's a way you can do it without necessarily having to trade in cards. You can just stake some Marsha, get some power that way, and fill a gap that you may not want to trade cards for. Okay. So uh, next question. So will Mission 4 uh, have all the new listed items that were shown in the Medium article? And um, how much power will generate each rarity of mega power, fusion, and solar panel? So Mission 4 will have some of the cards uh, from the Medium article. I think the Medium article was in included some things from Mission 5 as well. So everything that's in that article is coming, but maybe not all straight away in Mission 4. Um, the, there's a player guide that's being worked on, and the player guide has really in-depth information about what specifically everything produces. Um, so it will be what inputs are needed, what outputs you get if you feed in the correct inputs. Um, it's broken down for every single item in the whole of the game. So as soon as that information is made public, I'm sure there'll be some community members who who make some cool tools that do some funky stuff and tell you what you'll be earning from your collection. Um, but for now, it's just a case of wait and see once the once the actual documentation comes out. Yeah, the guide will give you everything you need to you know make strategy, and then of course you have um, the mission plan itself. So we're going to be releasing more of a backstory to mission four that of course corresponds with the ISA and some of the stuff that being talked about in the red chip so you'll hear a little bit more from some of the uh, people involved in the isa and how they design the mission and what the mission objectives are so all of that will also be uh, releasing okay cool so that will be something that uh, we will have to keep open in another window when we play it just to to check in the beginning oh that's great uh so uh, next question was um when the resource economy uh, go live, what happens if you run out of input resources needed? So what are the negative impacts to those cards that now lack the input resources? So the intention with resource gameplay is you go through the whole chain, feeding in the correct inputs the, down the more complicated uh, 
resources. Um, what would happen if you don't have acquired inputs is your card just outputs a small amount of Marsha. There's no option at all for outputting resources if you're not giving the correct inputs because some of the far end resources are particularly valuable and we don't want people sitting on cards generating a little trickle of those resources and benefiting that way. So the intention is if you want to get the end tier resources, you go through the whole chain to earn those resources. Um, so yeah, if you're not giving the correct inputs, you're just getting a little dribble of Marsha um, you you really should be doing the resource gameplay. Okay. And uh, next one, again about the rarities. Will the different rarities of NFTs return more of the resources? For example, a dark matter solar panel would generate more power than a gold solar panel. And all the amount of resources produced or spent will be calculated based on the rarity of the card. Yep. So it's exactly the same way Marsha is done currently. It's all based on the earning power of the cards. So cards with a higher earning power will therefore require more inputs to feed them and get more outputs in exchange for that as well. Um, higher rarity cards also have better resistance to hazards. Um, I don't know if that's known yet. So essentially, when hazards roll in and they start impacting cards, if you've got a a hazard which is only just really damaging a card, you're getting the lower rarity cards affected by it, but not the higher rarity cards. Um, so it's definitely worth upgrading cards to make them more hazard resistant. Oh, good to know, yeah. That kind of, uh, they are more difficult to break. So that's exactly. great. Um, Yes, so next one. Will the power generating NFT break down and need engineers to repair them after hazard and such? So that was already touched. Yeah. Yeah, so essentially it's not just the power generating NFTs that can break down, it's every single NFT can be impact or will at some point, I'm sure, be impacted by hazards. The intention is uh, the owners should be working to get their cards repaired. And if they aren't repairing their cards quick enough, I'm sure the player base will switch to cards that are being repaired quickly. So we'd be expecting to see a lot more um, fluid movement between the ownership cards and perhaps now where people tend to, to stake to one and forget about it as long as it's in the you know top couple of taxes. No one really cares that much. Whereas if you've got one solar panel, you know is a 1% tax and it's always being fully repaired as soon as possible. Well, maybe that's going to attract more people to it. Yes. There's, uh, there's tokens that you'll be earning in game uh, and those tokens will actually be used for repairing whether that is repairing ownership cards repairing sponsorship cards or reactivating your cards that have been deactivated by hazards so some people I'm sure will specialise down the route of actually uh, creating these tokens stockpiling these tokens being the, the repair guys essentially um, and then they will be the people to turn to when big hazards hit and everything starts going offline. These guys will be the guys that have the stockpile that can then get the colony back up and running again. Okay, so that will be their job on Mars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so next question. Um, regarding the recent reveal of the Mars resource chain, can we see some evolutions concerning the type of resources generated by the current cars? For instance, Will the rover or the buggy be able to produce something else than only Marsha for the player? Yeah, so this is an interesting one. Essentially, the cards that are producing just Marsha at the moment, most of them have plans to produce other stuff down the, down the line. Um, the vehicles in particular are quite interesting because there's been uh, a game that we've been working on which is an interactive game for those that are looking to really engage and spend more time and thought power in it. Um, what essentially happens is the earning power you've got of a vehicle, you can log into a game, drive around a map, uh, looking for hidden resources so that you can, you can find data, you can find ore, you can find water. Um, so it's a real interactive experience people that get good at it will get more rewards than um, than passive gameplay. People that are bad at it should maybe move to more passive gameplay or get, get good, one of the two. Um, 
but it's really a, a good opportunity for people that want to actively influence what they're getting uh, to, to play this mini game, to have fun in the process, to actually be able to put their skills to use and have their their rewards reflect the effort they're putting in and their abilities. Yeah, it's going to be a fun, fun thing. I, we'll try to release some footage pretty soon of it, but we've all been playing it and uh, <laughs> it gets addicting. Not me. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I want to try it too. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, that's great. I'm impatient to see that. Okay. Um, yes. So next one. Yes, the classical one. Um, is there any listing plan on this day? And uh, what is what can when can I exchange all material tokens? And what exactly is the plan concerning the the bridge? So the BSC and EVE bridge. Can you elaborate on it? Yeah. Um... So I guess the first thing is, you know, of course, we release the resource, uh, the, the full resource chain. There's 16 resource tokens. Uh, we're going to add those to the resource or sorry, the staking pool soon. So uh, if, if people want to start strategizing which resources they want to accumulate based on their cards, based on um, the inputs and outputs, you'll have an opportunity to do that from like the uh, full resource chain. So uh, we're working on that like today you know, wrapping it up pretty soon. Next week should be when it's released, um, ideally early next week. So uh, definitely look out for that. And um, yeah, the other thing I guess is in terms of the bridge, we're super excited about that. We'll, pe we'll keep people updated as we continue discussions with exchanges and partners. Uh, the bridge is really about getting flexibility, reaching new audiences. Uh, we want the game to be, you know, shown to a lot of people. Um, just like I think everyone in the community does, we have something you know that we're really proud of, and we want more people to uh, get involved and learn the science of Mars, learn about you know the the full colony plan that we're developing. So uh, the bridge is a tool that helps us kind of get out to different audiences. So uh, yeah, we're we're uh, we're excited about that, and of course that's uh, super high priority. Okay, um, so yes. I need to digest all that. But uh, yes, next question. Um, will the resources token be traded outside of WAX? Yeah, so of course it's a blockchain token like anything else. Um, right now our pro priority is really uh, Marsha. So, you know, we'll basically start with Marsha and then go from there. So I wouldn't expect anything, you know, for, for a little while, but uh, Marsha is really our priority since that's kind of the core token that governs a lot of the gameplay. OK, still around the exchanges. Uh, will there be any option to exchange resources with other players? So are there plans to offer an in-game resource chain exchange? Or would you need to buy or trade them with a third party site? Yeah, so um, for us, we're really about building a game. So our focus is always going to be on a on gameplay. Uh, we're not really interested in making an exchange. <laughs> it's a lot of work and uh, it's not really the core of what we do. So um, of course they're all blockchain assets. So, you know, you can do with them as, as you want. Um, but, you know, the, the core of what we're going to be building is really around the gameplay. And then the question I've seen already over one, one hundreds of time, uh, is the mission for sold in Marsha? And do we have at least one month to stake our Marsha before the sale? Yeah, great question. So uh, Marsha, or sorry, mission four will be sold in game. Uh, current plans are gonna be basically that one of the options will be to buy them with Marsha. Uh, we want other options as well. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you wanna buy them with Marsha, that, that should be an option. Um, we think it's important. Of course, it's you know part of the the in-game economy, and uh, we want you know people who are participating in the game to you know have NFTs, have access to all the cool stuff that we're releasing. Um, so that's important. And then you know, in terms of the actual timing, I would say you have at least a month. So if you want to stake for a month, uh, good to go. You know, we're still it takes a lot of work to get this in in place. So 
I'd say you have uh, at least a month. We're working as fast as we can to get all this up. But yeah, I think that's, um, I think that answers it, right? Yeah, that, that answers it. Cool. So uh, guys, if you are listening, uh, try to do your stake in the next, I don't know, one, two, three day, and you should be okay for one month. Okay. Um, so will we get actual numbers for the resource inputs and outputs? Also, are animals in the plan for the future? And uh, are any resources uh, implement will are any new resources will be implemented in the future missions? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, as Sam alluded to a little earlier, we are working on the player guide right now. So that will give every uh, input output exact um, amounts. So you'll have everything you need to plan your strategy in there. In terms of animals, it's a really interesting one. Um, a lot of the you know people we talk to, they're recommending insects actually as as one of the main sources of proteins, which is interesting. Um, there's also some some talk with you know fish and doing um, you know various aquaponics and stuff. Um, but in terms of I guess cards that represents animals we don't really have plans for that yet but of course it's um as the colony develops we'll see kind of where it goes but yeah it's um it's definitely a good thing to to think about in terms of the resource um types we have 16 we're trying to balance sort of simplicity with the science so it's still accessible to all different um players and, and play styles so we think this achieves a really good balance to start so we're going to start here. Uh, we can always add, you know, more resources if we need to, but this gives us a good balance between uh, the science and learning about that, and also having it be something that's manageable for new players. That's great. And honestly, sushis and insects—that's both okay for me. Insects are good. In <laughs> fact, they do taste almost like nuts. All all those I've tried until now. So, but for me, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, fishes and insects. That's great. Um, so next one, um, yes. From my understanding, uh, X amount of Marsha per hour is released. As players start to shift their cards to outputting resources versus Marsha, players may see the amount of Marsha per hour earned increase. Is that correct? As the staking weight of the cards is moved into the resource chain. It's not correct anymore, no. Um... Essentially, what will happen is instead of being a a pie and you're getting a cut of the pie, it will change to you will get what you are owed based on what you're doing. So if if the whole colony is outputting everything as Marsha, or if the whole colony is outputting the minimum possible as Marsha, all that will happen is the bank will distribute more or less to meet the demands of what's needed by the people earning that Marsha. So it, it won't be that there is a big pot of money. And if everyone is switching to resource gameplay and you think, oh, I'm going to sit there and just do Marsha, you won't be getting this massive amount of Marsha compared to where you should be. It will, it will just be what you're actually owed. So in a way, what the rest of the colony does won't impact your decision directly. It won't mean that you get more or less than what you're owed based on what you'd expect from your cards. Um, it may indirectly influence what you're doing, where if everyone else is outputting Marsha, then there's going to be demand for certain resource tokens. And when there's demand for those resource tokens, you can fill that gap in other people's resource chains. Um, but no, in terms of the Marsha being released, that will be variable based on what we need it to be. So it won't be that you can just get a lot more than you can currently. Okay, so sorry for the person who asked that. The strategy was well thought, but it will not uh, work in this case. Okay. Um, what is a person, yes, so I guess, what if a person decides to stake for 100 person Marsha? Will it still require us providing the input resources to keep in performing? Yes, it will. Um, so essentially, what we're looking at is as you get more and more uh, complicated inputs, effectively, 
there has had to be multiple times someone sacrificed their marsha to get their output that you're then using as an input. So it won't be straight up that you will get the same marsha as before. If you're using a card that's really far down the chain, like a fuel generation device, um, then in that situation, there's multipliers in place. So when you feed in your inputs, if you've got the slider set to 100% marsha output, you are getting significantly more marsha than before. But that's a reflection of the fact that multiple people or you have sacrificed marsha along the chain earlier to get those resources that you're effectively now burning and turning into marsha. So yes, you will still need to provide inputs, but it's not going to be just straight up, I'm getting the same marsha as I would do now. You will get multipliers based on how far down the chain you are and your slider settings and so on and so on. So that, that'll all be explained and we'll make it really clear. Um, but yeah, there, there's a bit more nuance to it than yeah. just being able to do that. So then it's some kind of value added due to the processes exactly, that have yeah. taken place. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, uh, next one. So certain items produce two resources. Are the players going to choose which resources they want to produce? Or are both resources produced simultaneously? Uh, both resources are produced simultaneously and they will always be in the same ratio to one another. So um, if you've got a fuel generator that's outputting some fuel and some oxygen it's based on the earning power of that card and you will always get the same and i can't remember the numbers off the top of my head but if for argument's sake it's two-thirds fuel one-third oxygen then that will always be the case of what's outputted so if you're feeding in the inputs that will be the outputs you get um, and that will that will always be how it is so there's no choice in terms of the player if you're feeding in the inputs, you will get those outputs and they will always stay in the same ratio for that particular card type. That, that also helps for planning. If it was variable, that would become quite difficult to balance, I guess. Um, next one, uh, will the sequence... Well, I'm changing, okay. So will the sequence of type of items in the mass resource chain, so that starts from the solar panel currently, and um, the, so the, the items that are used for resource allocation as output to the cards, uh, is that sequence going to change or vary during a different course of event or actions in the game that would happen in the future? So is it possible that during a hazard, a rocket exploration, a mass quake, the preference of the order of item in the resource change could change the the question's a bit hard to understand yeah. if i'm understanding it in the right way then no it won't change um essentially what happens is the every hour it just looks through the whole resource chain and sees do you have the required inputs to get the required outputs um there will be things that cause issues via hazards so if you've been affected by a hazard and it's hampering certain parts of the resource chain, um, then obviously you're getting less outputs. So if you've got a stockpile of certain resources, that will get fed in instead. If you are trying to be efficient and produce exactly what you need and a hazard hits, then you may find some of your later on items switching off for that hour and just producing that trickle of marsha, which no one really wants to see. Um, so yeah, from my understanding, of the question is the order won't change. You may need to change how you're preparing for hazards and have little stockpiles in place just in case they do impact you. Um, I think that hopefully answers what that question was intending. Yeah, that, that's. I think that's all I understand. I understood it too, and then so be be cautious and do have a little bit of savings for your resources i guess exactly. for yeah. when something happened um okay so next one um can you show us a preview of what your our your wall screen our wall screen will look will be like once the new updates drop so yeah so i'm assuming this is talking about the ui um 
we'll, we'll have stuff out, you know, within the next few days. So um, I think that will be a great, you know, <laughs> way to see it. Uh, rather than us sending a preview, you guys can just check it out and try it out. So, um, yeah, our goal is to really get things out quickly and, and uh, regularly. So um, that will be the first of the new UI, a lot of foundation for the uh, upcoming gameplay features. And we've restructured a lot of things to accommodate for that. So next one, oh, that's a nice one too. So is there a VR version in the plans? like work on the mass and the repair environment? Yeah, I mean, it's totally possible for us to do um, the way that we're building, you know, some of the um, some of the game, like the map, for instance, you know, we're using uh, Unity. So it's possible for us to hook that into a uh, web VR. Um, so if, if you guys really want it, we can add it in. We're really focusing on kind of the critical path to the game as quickly as possible. So for things like VR. Um, I, I'd love for us to discuss it in Discord and Telegram and, you know, the other channels. And if you guys really want that in, we can look at how to uh, add that into a roadmap. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So let us know in the, in the Discord. Uh, so if the community wants it, that will be considered. That's great. Um, okay. So next one is more practical so uh, please create videos on how to play the game and information video about game uh, in indie and in the english language yeah absolutely um you know we're working hard on comprehensive resources uh, written and then of course videos will come after that and we'll definitely keep this in mind okay um and then Yes, I was here. Uh, what will be the purpose of fuel? It was logical to me that the rocket ship should require fuel, but they do not. They do. They do require fuel. Um, <laughs> it's just not in the same way that the resource gameplay has been been described so far. So essentially, um, there's a whole part of the the game that hasn't really been discussed so far called the colony development. Um, and essentially, the way that resource gameplay has been designed, you work your way through the resource chain, getting more and more complicated resources. But clearly, somewhere towards the end of the chain, you have to do something with those complicated resources. Otherwise, they just sit there and build up. So the intention is there's effectively three end tier resources that we do things with, which are fuel, data, and construction materials. They each serve slightly different purposes. So yes, the fuel is used for refilling the rockets. Effectively, uh, we are filling the rockets with fuel to take off from Mars. It doesn't need anywhere near the level of, um, of fuel that you would need to leave Earth's atmosphere because there's less atmosphere and less gravity. So you don't have to do quite as much as the, the people on Earth are doing. Um, but you fill these rockets with fuel via a different UI, a different experience. The community are collaborative, collaboratively contributing the fuel. Um, and then you get rewarded. So as the rockets make their return flight, you will be rewarded with cards, including ownership cards and sponsorship cards and things based on your percentage contribution as almost like a, a, a raffle system. So the more you contribute, the higher chance you've got of winning. But if you contribute just a tiny bit of fuel, there's always that little chance that you can come away with an ownership card. Um, that's kind of how the, the fuel side of things works. Discoveries are a new NFT that's coming out linked to data. Effectively, you are contributing towards certain discoveries you know are being worked on back on Earth. You are getting data from labs, transmitting it back through the comms arrays. That is then turned into new NFTs that will do absolutely crazy stuff for your collection. Um, some of the ideas we've got are just, I mean, I don't want to say out of this world because it's, <laughs> but they can, yeah. um, so effectively you can um, get these NFTs that will influence how you play the game and may then impact uh, future decisions about how you form your collection. 
there will be one major discovery each time, which will be very powerful with 50 minor discoveries, which will be 50 of the same thing, but a much more, more uh, mild version of the of the big NFT. Um, so those will be really interesting, seeing how the community feels about those. So data is used for that pot. And then construction materials, essentially uh, from Earth, we're shipping up the kind of the 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 core systems of a building, but we're not shipping up the whole building. And then on Mars, the community will come together, collaboratively build these buildings. You'll be contributing your construction materials to whichever building you fancy. And then as the building is completed, it is raffled off based on how much people have contributed to it. So we can expect to see some various tactics where some people maybe go for for the buildings that less people are contributing to. Some people go for the buildings that are more rare. Um, and it will mean that people are then spending their resources again to earn that one particular ownership card of that building as it's finished. So those are the three kind of colony development opportunities open. And that's where the resources leave the resource gameplay and do some cool things that we haven't really talked about before. Yeah, and then we'll have an article um, coming out pretty soon that will go through everything that Sam just mentioned in detail and have visuals and all that. So we're excited for that too. Okay. Well, that's great. And uh, just looking rapidly at the chat. Uh, thanks, Emil. Already love the game. Great. Uh, great ideas of game mechanics. Thanks, thanks Vlad. Um, your question, Emil, about will it be possible to travel to Earth? I, Sam just answered it. So there will be the, the rocket traveling. Um, the price of repair, I don't know if the price of repair will be in the player guide or will it be just the input and output for each card? Uh, I'm not sure it's in the player guide. Um, the, the, cost, the cost will be fixed in terms of the tokens you use based on the rarity of your cards and how long until they'd naturally repair. Um, the interesting thing will be that depending on what the player base does, they may massively produce these repair tokens or everyone might turn around and say, we don't want to produce any of them. So the when we talk about the, the price of repairing, the actual token price will remain constant, but the Marsha equivalent price depends on whether the community is oversupplying or undersupplying these tokens. Um, so there's definitely going to be some variance based. It won't always be a straight yes or no. Do I repair? There won't be a clear answer because it will depend on how much the community is producing at any point in time, which is what we definitely okay. wanted. We wanted there to be a choice rather than a clear black and white yes or no. Okay, so really some room for strategy there. Uh, just looking, uh, one last one. Uh, I think it's interesting. I have a question here asking, uh, is that mini game multiplayer so will they be will they see the other players playing the mini games or will it be individual as it stands at the moment it's an individually instanced uh experience um we are looking into skins for vehicles and if you are staked to rover one and rover one has a fancy cool skin on it you would experience that skin so you you're kind of referencing what the owner's done to their vehicle, but we, it, it's almost like, um, we didn't want to be in a situation where people couldn't take their rover out when they wanted to because someone else was in the middle of using it. That's not the sort of gameplay experience that I think people want. So currently it's not multiplayer. Clearly, as, as Hunter's already said, if the community come back and say it's something they really, really are super eager for us to work on, it's something we will we'll happily look into. Um, but as it stands at the moment, it won't be multiplayer. You'll just go off, do your, your kind of individual problem solving experience, see what rewards you get and in an, an instanced version of the game just for you. Great. Okay, so, uh, well, we have seen all the questions and also part of what was yeah the, the question I still see uh, in the chat that will be I guess in the article that will be out in a few days with the information 
There's one. Um, there's one that's uh, is our tokens used for repairing going to be burned? Ah, yes, that one. Um, yes, I believe that is true. So we will be burning the repair tokens once they're spent on repairs. And this, the same goes for fuel, uh, data, and construction materials. As right. they're contributed, they are removed from the, the system, basically. So we're not storing them as a team. They are just being removed. Um, and that's that. OK. Well, great. Uh, thanks a lot. So I, I would like to invite uh, everyone uh, in the chat uh, to our movie night on Sunday. And we will have some quizzes around the team of resources so if you listen carefully uh, you can join us on sunday join me and uh, the other moderators uh, on sunday for the games on the discord um, i remind you to uh, about the next episode of the redshift that will be on next tuesday and um, as under announced we will have the new ui the updated ui which is beautiful i can't say too much You'll see it in a few days next week. Uh, so, Anta, um, uh, Sam, maybe, would you like to add something? Um, no, I think I think we covered it all. I'm glad we were able to uh, chat with everyone on on the um, the call around some of the really cool stuff we're working on. And um, thanks again, Sam, for for answering some of the the gameplay uh, systems and gameplay mechanics questions and. Really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, definitely tune into the Redshift. There's a lot more interesting stuff happening on Mars, and um, I'm excited to see what Emma's up to this week. OK, thanks. And thanks to you, too, Sam. I saw in the chat that you were considered that very pro in your answers. So <laughs> I thought that, too. That was great for a first, uh, first participation. Thank, thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one question I see keep on coming up. What is the most mm -hmm. extreme target of colonized Mars? And I can't say too much clearly. Um, but one thing I would say is since joining the team, the ambitions for this project are, are much, much bigger than most of the community are aware of. And I'm very keen to see where things go. And I'm really proud of what we're making here. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting as more and more stuff comes out, seeing the community's reaction to what's being worked on will be really, really good. I think that too. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, so thank you, everyone. See you in the Discord in a few minutes. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Have a nice evening for me, <laughs> afternoon, mon um, morning, wherever you are. See you. Bye-bye. See you, everyone. Bye.